It's been two years since I last made a melee gear upgrade guide, and when that video was made, the OSRS community was still unsure about a lot of upgrades and the weight of some of those upgrades. Efficiency wasn't as well known as it is today, and there's a lot more information now about how important certain stats are and how we can effectively translate this into the type of gear that we upgrade first. So in this video, we will be discussing what gear you should be buying for melee and in what order to get the most benefit out of those purchases. Timestamps will be in the description as usual. To start this video off, I'm going to set a couple parameters. And first is that I'm going to give us a set of starting gear. And this set of starting gear is designed to be very welfare. It is around like 2.5 to 3 mil, very cheap. And the reason I'm setting this is to give us a starting point. There's a lot of gear in this game, and if I don't give us like a clear starting point, it's very difficult for me to have any direction with this video. And secondly, the gear that I'm going to be talking about is going to be upgrading as if you were just training combat in general. There's a lot of gear in this game, especially for melee. There's a lot of gear in this game that's like specifically designed for special niche uses. And so the purpose of this video will be to discuss the most general use possible. So that way I'm up appealing and kind of speaking to like the most broadest sense of the player base. I will at the end be going into some of the more like finite details, things like Justiciar, Varrox, Barrow sets, things like that. But for the most part, we'll just be talking about upgrading your gear as normal, upgrading your gear for just general combat use. So the basic set that we will be working with, I'm going to be using this for Slayer, but the only thing that really matters for that is like the headpiece. So Black Mask or, nay it's not, really it's dependent on Slayer or not. Obby Cape, Glory, any kind of blessing, any kind of god blessing you have, a Dragon Scimitar, Fighter Torso, Obby Shield, Rune Plate Legs, Combat Bracelet, Climbing Boots, and a Ring of Dueling, otherwise known as the Champion Special. So now that we have our starting point, let's look at what the end result will be when we're done with eventually maxing everything out. Slayer Helmet, or probably like a recolored one because we're going to be a true Chad by the time we're done with this, an Infernal Cape, an Amulet of Torture, Rada's Blessing 4, a Scythe or Garazi Rapier, or the Blade of Saldor, but that's kind of a meme at this point. Bando's Chestplate, a Vernic Defender, Bando's Tassets, Ferocious Gloves, Primordial Boots, and a Berserker Ring Imbued. Now this entire setup is very expensive and is the final result. There are different upgrades we can get along the way to getting these best in slot items, so it's important for us to look at the importance of certain upgrades based off of their gold efficiency, which basically means how much benefit we get from an upgrade based on its price. All right, first thing we want to upgrade with our, um, our, our our climbing boots in this setup. Uh, let's um let's get those into dragon boots like real quick. They only cost 328k. They require 60 defense to wear, and they give you plus four strength bonus, which is a um, oh how do I say this? It's a significant upgrade over climbing boots. Um, so yeah, just buy these super quick. They're really not that expensive, and yeah, well worth it in terms of the strength bonus. So after the boots, you're kind of at a crossroad. Um, you can either go ahead and upgrade your legs or you can upgrade your weapon. Weapon is pretty much like biggest DPS upgrade, but the legs that we're going to be upgrading to, which are going to be the obsidian plate legs, are really not that expensive. And if you've got a mill to throw, then just throw a mill at your obsidian plate legs and just upgrade them. Um, you do get the plus one strength bonus over like the rune plate legs. So there is an argument to do it because it's in... Theoretically, it's infinitely better than your room plate legs in terms of offensive bonuses. Um, so, in a world, it's infinitely better than upgrading your weapon, so you would buy it. But it's really up to you. Weapon is definitely a bigger DPS upgrade, but these obsidian plate legs are going to be your best in slot item until you hit tacits. So, there's an argument to just buy them and get them out of the way. If you need more defenses, then you can look at buying, like the dragon plate legs or Torag's plate legs, which are cost about 160k to 375k respectively. Um, they offer much higher defensive bonuses, but they don't give you any of those offensive bonuses like the obsidian plate legs. And because of this, obsidian plate legs are generally better in almost every situation because in this game, just higher DPS is usually better than higher defenses. But let's talk weapons. So after the obsidian plate legs, I would look at upgrading your weapon right after that, as your weapon is your biggest DPS upgrade. So for strength, the order of best to worst weapons would be as follows. No, I'm not going to mention the Blade of Saldor because that thing is just ridiculously expensive to upkeep, so we're just not gonna even talk about it in terms of like a training weapon. So 
in order from best to worst, you have the rapier, which requires 75 attack and is at the point of writing the script 166 mil. The abyssal bludgeon, which is requires 70 attack and strength and 30 mil. The abyssal dagger and defender, which is 70 attack and 8.7 mil. Then the Ceridoman Sword at 70 attack and 950k, and the Dragon Scimitar, which requires 60 attack, Monkey Madness 1, and costs about 60k. If you're training attack or defense, the order is Rapier and Defender, Whip and Defender, Dragon Scimitar Defender. Theoretically, you can use the Whip to train strength by putting it on controlled, but this has since fallen out of the meta due to more efficient strength training methods being introduced into the game throughout the years. I point you towards the bludgeon and the abyssal dagger for this. So I would recommend training strength first after getting level 70 attack and defense. So getting at least an abyssal dagger would be ideal to help your strength training and increase your DPS. Obviously, if you can afford a bludgeon, then go for it. That, as a lot of monsters in the game actually have a crush weakness and the bludgeon hard smacks those mobs because like it just only crushes everything. It's just a crush move. You could also train with a blessed Sarah Sword, which involves using a Sarah Domans tier on the Sarah Sword and requires you to have 75 attack. This will degrade after 10k attacks, but it does increase the attack bonus of the Sarah Sword by 18 and its strength bonus by 6. It's not practical to use this as like it's like using a tentacle whip to train, but if you want to and you're a baller, then sure, go for it, I guess. So now that we've kind of upgraded our character a little bit, that ring of dueling is looking a little sus. Let's um let's upgrade that. So introduce the Berserker Ring. Costs about three mil at the time of recording and gives you plus four strength bonus. So we don't really worry about the defensive bonuses of this ring that much, and it's definitely not a flashy upgrade. But plus four strength bonus from plus zero strength bonus is great. It's 750k per strength bonus, which, I mean, that's a pretty good rate. We usually take those. Those are usually, okay, thumbs up from me. Um, but if you do get this, make sure you head over to Nightmare Zone as well and imbue this thing, because the Berserker Ring itself normally is completely fine. It's plus four strength bonus, but as soon as you imbue it, it suddenly goes up to plus eight, which is, I don't know if any of you can do math, but that's double the strength bonus. That's huge. It's massive so berserker ring right after your weapons definitely worth it definitely worth the three the three mil 750k per strength bonus and then if you manage to imbue it congratulations now it's like 400k per strength bonus or 250 or something like that it's ridiculously good rate just get this berserker ring after your ring or after your weapon you'll thank me later the next thing we'll want to upgrade is our neck piece, and we want to get an Amulet of Fury here, as it's a significant upgrade over the Amulet of Gloy, and it's not too expensive. For about 2.8 mil, we get plus 2 strength bonus over the Amulet of Gloy, as well as some defensive bonuses and plus 2 prayer bonus. This necklace will be useful in other combat styles as well, so that's a side benefit of purchasing this necklace. It's a good point to mention that this is kind of known as like the best all-around neck piece it doesn't really it's not really like the best neck piece in any combat style but when you're first upgrading all of your gear it's a great thing to buy because it does do very well in every single combat style so i would heavily recommend buying an amulet of fury short breaking the action here but get your fire cape please it's best in slot pre-infernal cape for melee and it isn't, it's not as difficult as it used to be when you didn't have like the toxic blowpipe in the game when you just had like a crossbow. If you cannot get this cape for whatever reason, nerves, anxiety, whatever, I get you. Um, then I guess I'd recommend using like an arty cape or a skill cape instead. Uh, the arty cape is nicer than a skill cape because it does offer some attack bonuses and it offers a prayer bonus. It doesn't give you any strength bonus though and that's why a fire cape is just so, I guess, mandatory. So after you've tailored to upgrading your weapon, let's move on to the gloves. Now for the longest time, Barrow's gloves used to be just the overall best glove item, and it's still a very good item, but thanks to Dragon Slayer 2 and the introduction of the Alchemical Hydra, we now have the Ferocious Gloves as the new melee best in slot. These cost 7.8 mil for the, leather, for the leather to upgrade the Barrow's Gloves into Ferocious Gloves, and they are well worth it in terms of gold efficiency. 
However, this is a Melee Slayer oriented video, so I'm mentioning this as Ferocious Gloves, which require 80 attack and defense, are great, and it'd be a sin to not mention them, but for Slayer, you should almost always be wearing a bracelet of slaughter or of expedition to obtain the highest xp rates so do keep that in mind you will almost never use these if you explicitly use melee and slayer and nowhere else unless you do boss tasks in which case you will want to bring a glove switch so you don't have to camp the bracelet the whole time so you can actually like max out your um, dps in general but if you do things like chambers of Zarek, then having ferocious gloves is great just for the increased strength bonus and attack bonuses Next up, let's revisit that fury. We've come a long way from our initial setup. We've got obsidian play at legs now, berserker ring, probably an abyssal whip or dagger at this point, amulet of fury, hopefully a fire cape or at least an arty cape, and maybe, maybe we even have ferocious gloves. Now that fury, we need to change. Monkey Madness 2 introduces Zenite jewelry into the game. They are nuts. They're best in slot in every combat style that they respectively belong to. The Amulet of Torture is crazy good as it gives plus 5 to all melee styles over the Amulet of Fury, so, so plus 15 attack bonuses instead of plus 10, as well as an additional plus 2 strength bonus over the Fury. Now you do trade off the overall versatility of the Fury's attack bonuses, defensive bonuses, and prayer bonuses, but upgrading from the Fury to the Torture is an overall melee DPS increase due to the additional strength bonus primarily. The extra melee attack bonuses is just icing on the cake. Keep in mind to equip this amulet, it will require you to have 75 HP as well as having money to buy it, which these sit anywhere from 10 to 15 mil, so really depends on the day. Well, now we're left with the three most expensive pieces of the gear left. Primordials, Tacits, and BCP. We're going to tackle all three of these in the same spot. So you'll want to prioritize Prims over Tacits and BCP. Due to the increase in strength bonus from D-Boots to Prims is more than Obby Legs, Tacits, or Torso to Banish Chest Plate. Plus, you also get attack bonuses from the Primordial Boots, so there's just a lot of pros for the Boots over either Tacits or Banos Chestplate. You'll also be using the Prims in more places than like Tacits, usually, so they just see more general use. Like, take for example, if you're wearing any kind of prayer gear or something, and you're not using Devout Boots for, you know, whatever reason, let's say you're praying against Neck Rails and you're not ranging them, you're meleeing them. Well. If you're not probably not going to use devout boots you're probably better off just using primordial boots at that point but you will be using like proselyte legs and proselyte chest piece so it's better for you to just buy the boots they're more universal so buy the boots like if you ever play magic bolt the bird buy the boots after the prims you'll want to get the tacits as you get a strength increase from the obby legs as well as getting some very nice defensive bonuses that you haven't seen since your rune plate leg days finally you'll finish off with the bcp since compared to the fighter torso it's really only defensive bonuses and you're paying almost 20 mil for it. So it's really not worth it until like the very end. And there you go. Now you have all the best gear besides the rapier, which I'm assuming will take you quite a while to get. A note on the Rada's Blessing 4. This is no way a DPS upgrade as it only gives prayer bonus, like plus one prayer bonus over a normal blessing. But it's still worth mentioning that if you have the ability to complete the current Elite Diaries, then you should obtain this blessing, because plus one prayer bonus, I mean, it's something, right? But Surge, what about the Slayer Helmet or the Lobby Shield? Um, okay, if Slayer Helmet, whenever you unlock the ability to create the Slayer Helmet, you should. And if you're looking for a good melee helmet, then you should like upgrade to like a Serpentine Helmet, as it's best in slot melee, but this video is targeted at like melee Slayer training, so I won't be discussing it as a potential upgrade, but for things like uh, Chambers of Zarek, or once you get good at TOB, then it's also good there. Um, if you go to like Bandos or something, it's fine there, because it's best in slot melee. And then your Obby Shield, you should be upgrading that to a Dragon Defender as soon as possible. If you're wondering about the Avernic, um, you can thank Divine Super Combat Potions. It's rendered that like almost useless. Um, it's like a very, it, you can ask almost anybody. It's like one of the very last things you're ever going to upgrade. So just don't really worry about the Avernic until you've got like a lot of money just kind of sitting around. Like then upgrade your Dragon Defender into an Avernic. Don't be like me and upgrade it super early. Really bad idea. 
Another gear set I want to discuss here is the Justiciar set. The set costs about 60 to 65 mil depending on variants. Uh, there are not a lot of uses for this gear besides like the headpiece which is used in most first infernal capes. Uh, the full set does offer a unique set bonus that reduces incoming damage by a percentage. You only see people like you only see this really being used people who are AFK rune dragons or AFK really any kind of melee moneymaker as it helps reduce the amount of damage coming in drastically. Sometimes you'll see people using it in the Inferno, but it is by no means recommended due to like consistency issues. If you want, I can make a entire video discussing like Inferno setups and why Justiciar is not usually recommended. Um, but again, this is not the video for that, so we won't go into it. Just know that most of the times you'll see those people, you'll see this being used for people that are camping rune dragons, and that's all you really need to know about Justiciar. Oh, um, special weapons. This is actually a good topic. I'm glad I almost didn't forget about this, thanks to the magic of editing. Um, so, in terms of DPS, really the only two that are really important are the Dragon Claws being number one as best melee DPS special weapon, and then followed by Dragon Dagger in most instances. There's other niche uses where, you know, one is better than the other, or like a Dragon Mace may be better i don't know someone used to say that um but usually it's just dragon claws being the best and then dragon dagger being second best um a couple other ones to keep in mind um bgs and dragon warhammer um, they both serve their purposes but generally these are used if you're going to do any kind of bossing so if you're going to get into any kind of bossing or a vorkath um definitely get at least a bgs dragon warhammer has definitely come down in price from where it used to be a while ago rip my brain but um Definitely a BGS is affordable and fulfills the same purpose, not as well as a Dragon Warhammer, but you get the point. Um, the SGS, SGS is fine. It's not really a significant DPS increase, but it's a huge quality of life increase. So if you want to fork over the money for the SGS, then go for it. But I'm not going to sit here and spew on and on about it like I did in my first video because... I've learned a little bit more about efficiency and realized that it's really not as good as I thought it was. It's still great, just not, you know, God. The Barrow sets, Guthans is used in Slayer. It's not efficient, but it's huge quality of life, similar to the SGS, which is what I just talked about. Um, but if you want that quality of life upgrade, then go for it. It's great for that. Um, Darox is really only used for PKing or training in Nightmare Zone, so no real need reason to talk about here. Varox is used like for will debossing and even then it's kind of fallen out of the meta so not a huge upgrade there. And then Torax is like laughable so don't even worry about that. Um, the only two that you really are concerned with is Guthans if you want that quality of life upgrade or Darox if you're going to be training. Dragon Hunter Lance. If you are going to be doing any kind of dragon so Rune Dragons, Vorkath, more importantly Ulm, um, buy this weapon. This weapon is nuts for dragons. It is also a decent crush weapon, so if you do any kind of Cerberus and you don't have money for a bludgeon, um, it's pretty decent for that. So there's that to be mentioned. Um, dragon Hunter Lance is great if you're going to do any kind of Ulm or any kind of dragon. So if you got the money for it and you're going to consistently do dragons, then definitely consider buying a Dragon Hunter Lance. And one last thing is a DFS. This is really only used for dragons. Yeah, no shit! And even then, with the introduction of super anti-fires, you have the choice of not even having to use the DFS just by sipping one of those potions and being completely protected from dragon fire. So if you're camping rune dragons, then having that shield is great for its strength bonuses, and you don't want to fork over the money for those potions. Other than that, the shield is pretty useless, and that's definitely reflected in its price, as it's only like five to six mil on any given day so up to you and so with that i think i've touched on almost every piece of melee gear that i really wanted to discuss in this video i hope this gives you a clear path in for anybody who's kind of like newer to the game i know that mobile released like a year ago or something we, we still have a ton of new players coming into the game or just people who don't really have an idea as to what to do with their money as they get it so i hope this video helps like give you direction in how i would go about upgrading my gear by no means is this like the end all be all like oh this is law you should always follow it like no this is a very like i put thought into this and there's definite arguments for upgrading different things at different times but this is what i feel would be the best for any kind of new incoming player 
obviously, like, some people will tell you, oh, you should just wait until you buy a torture. Fuck everything else. <laughs> like, that's not what I'm going to tell you. Like, I'm going to tell you to upgrade, like, in steps. So hopefully this gives you a clear upgrade path and gives you some kind of, like, progression sheet for your character as you upgrade things. If there's a piece of gear that you're curious about, just leave it in the comments below, and I'll be happy to, like, throw you, like, a couple sentences or a couple phrases on, like, what it's useful for and should you use it should you buy it if you're curious on anything just comment it down below um if you did like the video go ahead and like it if you want to see more content from the channel go ahead and subscribe i will be making an updated range and mage gear as well and then probably a prayer one as well because there's some niche uses for prayer and there's some things people don't know about prayer gear so i'll make a video on that as well so if you want to see those videos go ahead and subscribe um that's all i got for you guys though um have a good morning night evening afternoon mid-morning mid-afternoon i don't know thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video